Good morning, class. Good morning, Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Uh, no matter what's going on in your life, faith in God will overcome it. He knows how. Nothing's too big for him. I know it can seem overwhelming and so daunting. And in your mind, you don't know the answers to things, but he does. He's not trying to figure it out. He already knows. <laughs> and he will, he'll take us by the hand and he will lead us out of the problem into total liberty and victory if, if we will trust him, believe him, and follow him. How many will volunteer and say, I will trust him, I will believe him, I will follow him. Get your Bible and, and come on into the class and let's release faith for today. Father, we thank you for how gracious and good you have already been to us. Year after year, day after day, you've had mercy on us, you've kept us, you've spared us, you've sustained us, and we thank you for that. And we, we believe that your will for us and your plan for us is good and even better than what we've thought. Thank you for leading us into it, bringing us into the next parts of your goodness. We, we ask for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Go please to 1 John, the fifth chapter. Let's continue in our study of the faith that overcomes. 1 John 5, 1 says, Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Is that you? Do you believe? Are you fully persuaded that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer, the only Savior of the world? Amen. Then you are born of God. Verse 4, what does it say? And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Believers are not to be cowards. Believers are not to be weak. Believers are not to be confused and defeated and despondent and depressed. That's a contradiction in terminology, to say depressed, defeated Christian. Because the word Christ means anointed. <laughs> and we are not anointed to be depressed. Y'all with me, class? We, we are not anointed to be defeated. That anointing is life bringing. That, that anointing is burden removing, yoke destroying. That anointing is healing, delivering power. Amen? Amen? And the Bible said concerning Jesus that he was anointed with the oil of gladness above his brethren, his companions, and that uh, the scripture says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So it's a contradiction of terminology to say you're depressed Christian. No, you're a Christian, which means you're an overcomer. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> not a defeated Christian, not a failure Christian. No, I am born of God. Come on, say it out loud. I am, I am. born of God, born of God. And, I am. and I am an overcomer. An overcomer. What do overcomers do? Overcomer. They overcome them some. Is that right? <laughs> Whatever it is that you're having to deal with, what do you overcome? Whatever comes against me. Amen. Whatever 
I have to deal with in life today, that can be the curse, it can be disease, it can be lack or symptoms of lack, it can be confused, crazy, mean people. But you are an overcomer, right? And if you get hit, if you got get knocked down, come on, help me out. You do not lay there and cry and feel sorry for yourself. Come on, you, you get up because you're an overcomer. I said, you're an overcomer. If you make big mistakes, your own mistakes and failures, you overcome that too. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it again, I am am. born of God. God. And I am am. a world overcomer. overcomer. And this is the victory victory. that overcomes the world. Even my faith. Even my faith. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look in Romans, please, the uh, the tenth chapter. So, Mr. says, haven't we been over these scriptures already? Yes, we have, and we're going to go over them again. <laughs> and who knows how many times? <laughs> and they will never run out of power. <laughs> And we will not in this lifetime and beyond exhaust all the light and revelation from any one of these verses. There will always be more, more to see, more to know, more to get. Romans 10 in verse 15, how shall they preach except they be sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So here he's referring to the gospel as a report. He's using those terms interchangeably. Uh, They've not all obeyed the gospel. And then he said, he quotes Isaiah saying, who has believed our report? And verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The words translated hearing there, both places, is also the word translated report. And so you can see that's the subject because he just got through using that word in the previous verse. It can be translated like this. So then faith comes by a report and the report by the word of God. What is the report? Well, the report is simply what God said about the situation. You know, Lord, what is mankind's situation on the earth? <laughs> huh? Well, without God, human beings have uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. and uh, There's none righteous, no, not one. And, and the verses go on. Well, Lord, what, what do we do about it? I've already sent my son. He paid the price for all your sins. He was judged in your place and has been raised from the dead. And now all who believe on him will be uh, born again. And nobody ever trusted in him and was disappointed or made ashamed. And everybody that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a good report. what (laughs) mm, What a good report. But you go on. Has everyone believed God's report? Sadly, sadly, millions of people on this planet out and out reject God's report. They don't believe it. They don't accept it. They have chosen to believe another report. A report that there is no God. A report that man created himself. That's not science. (laughs) That's a a goofy belief that all creation, the planet, the stars, self-created spontaneously, poof, came into existence by their self. That's not science. That's a belief. And more significantly, it's a choice not to believe what God has said. It's a choice to reject that account of creation. 
No, thank God. There is a God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's real. And if we're smart, we'll believe what he says about everything. We will believe his report. Now, with that in mind, go with me back to Numbers, the 13th uh, chapter. And you'll see a, this is, this is such a, how can I say it, classic, perfect example, demonstration of faith and fear and what we're talking about with, with a report. God had delivered his people out of Egyptian bondage through a series. If you read, you know, the previous, uh, uh, you know, Exodus and, and what have you, you, you'll see the miracle after miracle after miracle because the ruling uh, people in, in Egypt, the Pharaoh, they were never going to let their slave labor force go. Never. And God, through a, a series of spectacular demonstrations, I mean, we, we've never heard of anything like it before or after. Well, it, it brought these hard-hearted unbelievers to their knees. And they not only let the people go, they gave them money and asked them to leave quick. <laughs> but that wasn't the end of God's plan for them. God's plan included delivering them out of bondage and servitude and taking them into a rich land where every need was met, where there was fruitfulness and abundance and plenty. And the reason we need to read these things and talk about these things is because they are types of what we have in Christ in redemption. The deliverance from worldly captivity and bondage. That's a type of us being delivered out of being lost. And then Canaan's land and all of its riches and wonder. That's a type of all the blessings and, and benefits that we have in Christ once we've been delivered out of bondage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture tell us that those things are written as examples for us. So they've been delivered out of slavery. And verse 13, they have come now to the border of the lands that God has told them he's given them. And so they, they selected 12 spies to go in and surveil the land, reconnaissance mission, and to, uh, well, well, we'll just read it. They chose one uh, outstanding individual from each tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel and two of them were, of those 12, were Caleb and Joshua. They represented their tribes. Caleb uh, represented the tribe of Judah. And um, Joshua, he represented the tribe of Ephraim. You'll find that in verse uh, 6 and uh, 8. Well, verse 16, it says that Moses, he renamed Oshia, Jehoshua. So Joshua's name was Oshia prior to this. And really, this is an interesting thing, but that is the name of the master. We call him Jesus. But if you'll read in the book of Hebrews, for instance, in the King James, it talks about Jesus leading them into the promised land. It's talking about Joshua. And that is the name. And the name means Jehovah saves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so really, Jehoshua or Yehoshia, ever how you, know, you pronounce it, 
That is the master's name. Jesus is a Greek rendering. No need in getting into all that. He knows if you're, if you're talking to him. <laughs> but I think this is significant too, don't you? And um, if not, you'll wonder why, it says, why it's saying that Jesus led them into the promised land in Hebrews. But it's this Greek thing. The name is actually Joshua. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said, Go you up this way southward to the mountain. See the land, what kind of land it is. The people that dwell in it, whether they're strong or weak, few or many. What the land is that they dwell in, whether it's good or bad. The cities, whether they're in tents or strongholds. The land, whether it's fat or lean. Whether there's woods or not. Be of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen unto Rehob as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron and Ahiman and Shishai and Talmai. The children of Anak were. Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. It's amazing the history that's in the Word of God. The details that, you know, that people find out even centuries later that it's accurate and it's true and it's right. Uh, well, of course it is. And they came to the brook of Eshko and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes and bear it between two on a staff. Now that's some serious grapes. <laughs> and, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was, was called the brook Eshko, uh, which means cluster or cluster of grapes, because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. So that's how the place Eshcol got its name. It was named after the grape cluster. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Now what are they getting ready to give them? The report. <laughs> right? Yes. The report. Is this a big deal? Yes. Now if, you, if you've read this and you know the story, then you know if you just stopped right here, it's a time of excitement. They have seen all, you know, there are 603 some thousand soldiers plus women, children, little ones, older people, so there's, what, two, three million people out there? And they have been delivered miraculously with signs and wonders out of a life of hard slavery, servitude. Now, not only are they not slaves, they've got new clothes and money, silver and gold, and God has told them he has gone ahead of them and picked them out a spot, a land that is Canaan land, that flows with milk and honey, that is a jewel of all lands. And so there is, they saw that God's, God did what he said. He got them out of Egypt. He got them out of slavery. And now we're moving into the next phase. We're moving into the next part. And so it's been over a month since the uh, reconnaissance team went out, and here they are, and you've already seen the big bunch of grapes, <laughs> and everybody is just full of anticipation to hear the report. Hmm? Y'all with me, class? Yes. And so they said, we came into the land where the you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and here is the fruit of it. Here's the evidence. And throughout the, the hundreds of thousands in the crowd, how everybody heard it, I'm guessing there was a good speaking point. There was good projection, but probably people passing the word back uh, through the ranks. And when they said, uh, when, when the people heard, we, we came into the land, surely. 
It flows with milk and honey, and here is the fruit. What do you think everybody was going? Ah, glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Isn't that? Oh, did you see those grapes? Verse 28, are you there? You almost don't want to read it. <laughs> Why? What's the next word? Come on, help me out. Nevertheless. That one word is such a bad word. This is where it all went wrong. Right here. Right here. With this one. What does nevertheless mean? What does it mean? Yeah, it's a good land. But that doesn't matter. Hmm? That doesn't make any difference. It doesn't matter that it's a beautiful land. Nevertheless, actually in Deuteronomy 1, we may look at that before we get through studying this, but it uses the word uh, nonetheless and nevertheless, same thing. Doesn't matter. What do you mean, doesn't matter? What doesn't matter? Well, that it's an amazing land, just like God said it would be. That doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. <laughs> right? It does matter. Can, can you see what, why we've been talking for days about believing the report? Hmm? Because uh, Isaiah had, had prophesied and said, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And see, we see Jesus quote this in the gospel account of John. And then we see the Spirit of God through Paul quote that in the book of Romans 10 where we've been reading it. It's something that keeps coming up. Who, God is saying, who has believed my report? What was God's report about this? It's a beautiful land. It's a good land. It's a wonderful land. And I have given it to you for you to go up and possess it. Does that matter? Should that be the main thing you're thinking about and believing? But here... They got proof that what God said about the land is true. They've got eyewitnesses. They've got a giant cluster of grapes. They got pomegranates. They got figs. They got eyewitness accounts of the beautiful streams and, and rivers and, and, and the lush hillsides and grass and, and forests and, and all of this. It's what everybody's been looking for their whole life. Nevertheless, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase and jump ahead a little bit. Doesn't matter. You're not going. Doesn't matter. It'll never be yours. Doesn't matter. Nevertheless. Now the reason I'm camping on this is because this is always how it works. Always. You'll get a good report. From the word of God. From the Lord. And I mean immediately. The enemy will jump up and say, that doesn't matter. Nevertheless, it ain't going to work for you. That's not going to work because of this. And there's always reasons why that's not going to happen for you or it's not going to work out for you now or for here or for during while these things are going on. There will always be something. If it's not the giants, it's the chariots. If it ain't the chariots, it's the walls. Even if it's not the walls, it's something else. But it's a reason and reasons why what God told you can't happen for you. Why it is too good to be true. It's, not, it's just not being realistic. And that's when you better buckle on your truth belt. <laughs> That's when you better strap on your breastplate of right, come with righteousness, lift up your shield of faith, and get the sword of the, the, the word of God, the sword of the Spirit working, because some things are trying to penetrate you and rob you of your confidence, rob you of your faith, steal 
your excitement that you should have about what God told you. Can you see it, Christ? They said, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. It's already occupied. This is not an empty land. There's people living in the land. And they're not little people. They're big people. The cities are walled. No, they're not just out in the valley in some tents. Big giant walls. Very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And oh man, that went throughout the crowds. Anak, 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 Anak. Anakims, Anakims. No, Anakim. <laughs> Anakims were giants. Giants. What, what is the enemy trying to do? Come on, help me out. He is trying to squash the plan of God. Huh? With what? The spirit of fear. Come on, can you see this? The spirit of fear, there, no doubt, there went a wave of fear over the thousands that were out there trying to hear this. And it comes. And with that word, the enemy, the spirit of fear, just jumped on people to panic them. And it's something, if you don't fight it, you'll be overwhelmed by it. And it'll try to come on you. Now, in these days, fear will try to come on you, try to jump on you, feelings of it, impressions of it. You've got to fight it. You've got to stand up and resist it. Don't let it overcome you. You overcome it. Because you are an overcomer. You told me you were. Remember? <laughs> the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, they're, they're letting go of God's report and they're accepting another report that is absolutely robbing them of their faith. Said out loud, I refuse to let that happen. I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our time's up again today. Said out loud, I live by faith, I walk by faith, I overcome the world by faith, I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. There's a lot more to see in this passage. Come back tomorrow, we'll get into it deeper here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.